doing it today. Somebody else has to do it. Yes, it's great. <laughs> Do you want to move? Do you want to move your computer here somewhere else? Put it here. Then. Oh, I need to show us where is the area. We need to connect first. Then you show us where the area is. Is this finally, is this making some sense now? Yeah. Grace? What is making sense and what is not making sense? Okay. Let's start. We, you remember the workflow. Did you write down the workflow I told you? Because whatever it is, you see, doing these things in Postman is just the first of many steps, right? You realize that once you come up with an implementation, you really have to do a whole bunch of things, right? Uh, like extracting that session ID, because it turns out that it finds itself in the header, right? It's not in the body. Zajlis.unza.zm. Zajlis.unza.zm. God, is it full colon 8080? <laughs> 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 then we did login. Oh. Huh? The rest end well, point. Yes, yes, we did that. Yes. I just forgot. <laughs> then we did yeah. login. Like that. Okay. Then we did the bot. Mm -hmm. Bot. Then we did. No, better go with the URL encoded form. Maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> then. Keys, username. So what you're mimicking here is what what you'd be assuming you. I don't think you do this though. I don't know how you're going to do this. Maybe you're going to initially for starters you can hard code the username and the password. Doesn't matter. But the key there is an email because you have to send when you're accessing the login endpoint. You must send uh, a payload, right? That is composed of no email. That's true. No, email. email yeah. The key. The value is the actual email. Yes. Oh. It's a key value pair. So email, all I guess. And then the value is email. <laughs> did you try cow? Like they say in the manual. How how is that did that work? Um, I don't try. I wanted to ask you it. Mm. Like, um, am I supposed to download? Download what? Bitcoin. No, you just install it. What are you using? Oh. You're, using you're using Windows. Yeah. Uh, I can't help you there. You'd have to look up how to install Carl <laughs> on Windows, right? Okay. The, the other key is the password. P A A P A S S W O R. Password. Oh, the four Yes. Once, once you understand this workflow, and once you understand what you have to send, send, and was, yeah, you can send that, and what comes back. What this is? What do I do? Zaj list. <laughs> Type these things for you, right? Mm -hmm. Just click send. Yeah, we're doing everything no. for you. <laughs> okay, so what happens now, right? What, what's happening is behind this, what Postman is doing is it's uh, now you notice here the rest of to get back, right? The stuff that you're looking for is going to be part of if you click the cookie here, you see there's one thing that thing will have the, the JSON, JSON ID that you need, right? 
And interesting enough, the way Postman works in points, it, it automatically keeps track of the fact that it is a cook. So if you click on cook, it's here. The GS session ID will click on here. It will have the same value that has been sent back. Right? So you sent a request to the server to say, log in with these credentials. If, if there was an error with a password, uh, you are probably going to get, uh, I don't know what response you got in here. This is the thing. Try out, let's try this out. Go to password, put X at the end or something, I don't know, whatever you want to put there. Let's try. Send. I want to check the, what's in the, no, on the body. Nothing is still. Right, so when you, when you, it turns out that when, when your, when your credentials are incorrect, like if you use an incorrect username, or an non-existent username and, and um, the wrong password, you get back a response, yeah. right? Fuse. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Fine. So, but what you can do though is there's an easier way of doing this. As part of your logic, what you're going to have to do is, you see, when you log in, whether the password is correct or is not correct, you still get the the, the session ID. This session ID. Okay. So what you yeah still comes back. So click click another tab here. So what you must do is as a second step. In fact, part of your logic should have some sort of like conditional statement, an if statement to say there's another endpoint slash rest slash status. Once the idea is once you send out your your credentials using the login endpoint. You use the status endpoint to confirm whether or not you have been logged on, right? So type in, it's a get request. The get request that doesn't require any payload, so just send it the way it is. Right? Um, No, status. So after you log in, you, you hit the status endpoint. When you click send here, it is going to return to you an XML representation. Report, sir. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to send through. Um, an XML representation. Are you, do you have uh, dyslexia or something? Spelling is a problem for you, right? Does yes. That, is that Zedgelis? I think you have it. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. There are a number of people that are affected by that thing, right? Have it's you what? been tested? Isn't it <laughs> <laughs> I've not been tested. There's, there's no, after the, no. there's no I after J. Spelling, do you, do you have challenges like spelling on a serious note? After J. After yeah. J, there's no I. It's just Zajlis. Z A J I. Ah, no, I don't now. have a problem. It's, it's what I knew. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's Zaj. Interesting. Right, so this thing here is a key. So once you send in your logic, right, you're probably going to send a request to that endpoint, the slash rest slash login endpoint, right? And then. Um, immediately after that, you send another request to this endpoint, the status endpoint, and then you have to extract the authenticated value from this XML response. Do you understand this? If authenticated is equal to true, then you process your logic. Else, if authentication is equal to false, then do whatever. You maybe signal the fact that it's wrong credentials. Do you understand this? Observe, go back to this. Um, this thing here. Hit. Wrong. Okay. Yeah. So we remove this. Remove the edge and then send the endpoint. Yeah, send the request again. And then go back to the get status. Send it. When you send it, it's going to come with the true. The authenticated is true. So when it's true, you know that the the credentials are correct, and then you can proceed with. With with the those trivial steps of 
create an item in a collection. Step number one. Step number two, you add a bit stream by specifying because once you create an item in a collection, you will get back an XML representation, a JSON representation. Is it XML or that JSON? Representation of the wait, was that JSON? Shit, let's check. Let's let's confirm this. Do, are you following through the workflow here? Yeah. Hit the, the login endpoint. Status. Yeah. Then immediately afterwards, send a request to the status endpoint. The status endpoint will always give you an XML response, right? Okay. In that response, check for the authenticated value. If it is true, then you will send another response to create a collection because you can you have not logged on. Do you understand this? So, this, yeah? You are logging in. This is simple. You're just sending requests and processing yes, responses. So create another thing so that you, because now you can. So, once you log in and you check the status, if the status is true, right, then you know you can create a collection. How do you create a collection? You create a collection by specifying. The collection ID within which you want not create a collection item. The, the collection ID within which you wish to create that item. How do you do that? <laughs> Sorry? I know. Do you understand? You must understand the way for me before, before you implement it, right? Because once you understand the small little steps that you're performing, it becomes a lot easier for you to come up with implementation. For instance, now you know how to send a request to the login endpoint. All you do is use the request module. Right? Once you do that, you immediately send another request to the status endpoint, and then you get back the response to the body. That's all. So Simple stuff. Do items. Yeah, for now, what you do, you must do as part of your logic also right. is no, 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 wait. Okay, maybe, but wait. As part of your logic also, because you're playing around with. What are you playing, playing, playing around that Zajlis thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Please do not insert things in any other collection, otherwise you have to redo what you did with the others, and because maybe you should back up that stuff, right? Because she's, you're playing around with, uh, you're playing around with what? You're playing around with uh, an instance of a display instance that has uh, important information, the stuff that you entered in there. Just make sure you're using the same collections, right? How do you do that? You say slash, how do you check the collection where you're going to be putting things? For now, because you're using, and it's okay, your implementation can just assume that this is the display instance we're going to be working with, because I know it's going to confuse you even more when we say, let's use the Unza display instance. You get confused, right? You are failing to process to send for simple requests. I'm sure you get confused. Slash collections. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, slash collections. This thing you're doing, you know that it's simple, right? It's just understanding yeah. the logic, and then once you understand yeah. the logic, yes. that's all. Sorry? Yes, yeah. it is. We are but you're shaking your head, ways. No, I'm saying yes. Yeah. Okay, right. So, which collection are you, going to, are you working with? Do you remember the name of the collection? The Out of the collections that have been listed here. Um, what do you call this? Expand. What's the opposite of expanding? Expand and then collapse. Collapse, collapse and click on this collection. Think all age, I'm forgetting these things. Collapse again. <laughs> okay, so we only have two collections in this uh, this space instance, right? Yeah. We know it's not the first one, so the collection we are going to be putting things is the second one. All you do is you keep track of the UUID. This is what you're using. So all you have to do is just strip this. For now, you can hard code it, actually, because you're going to be playing around with the same collection. Unless if you want to, to create another collection and play around with that, but I do encourage you to use the one that you created here. So copy that ID. Is hmm? that the ID? Sorry? The contrasting. Yes, it does. Yeah, it I don't know, maybe Windows, perhaps. Is Windows it really? does. Is this Windows or? Oh, is this? Oh, you listen to us, right? Okay, so you copy that. It's so for you to create an item in a collection is simple. The endpoint is slash rest slash collections. I'm sorry, did I actually collections slash 
the ID of the collection, which is what you copy. But of course, I mean, in an ideal case, this would have to be dynamically done, right? You don't have code things. In the, when you're coming I mean, in an the, ideal case. For, for yeah. now, if you can make life a lot easier, you can add code this, nobody cares. We'll fix this later on. But I'm saying, in an ideal case, once deploying this thing, it would have to be dynamic, right? Yeah, like you, Where you maybe the this. person who is depositing these things specifies to say, I want to send these things in this collection. Right? Yeah. In that menu. Okay. Slash, no, slash items. items. Right. Okay. No, but you don't, you don't do that. Huh? You don't do that because um, you must specify the payload, oh. the data. Slash one or No, you specify the data in the body. What you're doing here is you are wanting to create a an uh, item, an item a new item inside the collection. So you have to specify but which which item. You know why you got back this? By default, what you have done actually is you have accessed an endpoint that doesn't require you to log in actually. Number one, you're issuing a GET request. Yeah. When you issue a GET request like this, when you use this endpoint and you issue a GET request, it will return all the items in this collection. Oh, yeah. This is what you've done. In fact, it's, you don't have to take my word for it. You can go here and check the... Oh, shit. Go to... Just go to rest. Delete everything and just hit the rest so that we see. I thought this was your machine. I was talking about Linux. This is mine. <laughs> Shit. Uh, let's scroll down the collections thing. Um, okay. No collections. There we go. So what you, what the endpoint that you hit is oh. this. Oh yeah. It returns all it's items the in the collection. But what you are going to be doing is you yeah. creating. Yeah. You know, yeah, go back up. How do you create? create an item in the specified collection so you post, post and then you must specify the item that you want to post how do you specify the item you specify it by indicating the payload in the body okay. right so, so it's X no it's zero. a raw input it can be xml yeah. oh, oh yeah Thank so you. in the xml now this is where you start specifying because you're sending it to a dispersed instance you have to specify Dublin core qualify Dublin core fields, DC dot, DC dot subject, DC dot uh, create or something. I don't know if it's create, um, but I think I have uh, a template that I can share with you. You don't have to do this from scratch. Um, in fed. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Okay. So, and this thing is in the, if you check the DSpace documentation, it's there, right? This one includes uh, some fields, not all the fields, but some of the fields, right? Your task is going to be to identify everything that you, this is very strange, I woke up with a very weird headache today. But your task is going to be to identify all the fields that you need to send that side. The, and you can easily do this by matching what you are capturing in step number two. So step number two has the author, the uh, supervisors or something, subjects. Um, what else is there? The department and what department. What you have to do is map them onto these DC elements. So the author is DC dot contributor dot author. Okay. Right. Um, the abstract is going to be dc dot description dot abstract. So okay, yeah, I think. Do you understand this? I do. Isn't it? It's, it's, it's even the same with the, the HTMS um, 
documentation. Exactly, but the thing is, you see, ETJMS is different from Dublin Core. What well, we said was that the application that you guys are implementing has to take into account fields that are specific to ETDMS. Mm -hmm. but, but a repository platform like this space is generic, right? It takes in things that don't always necessarily uh, um, use or make use of the ETDMS metadata scheme, okay. right? So only ETDs are ideally supposed to be encoded using ETDMS. But the idea behind that is like the Excel application, like what you're implementing, can encode the data using ETDMS, but in theory, you can easily crosswalk from ETDMS to Dublin Core. It's possible. And in fact, it's, it's so possible that when you are extracting data using a protocol like OIPMH from Unza, for instance, right? What what, what uh, the, the option that this protocol, uh, at least this implementation of PMH, does is um, it gives you an option to specify which scheme you want to use to extract the data, right? So um, if I say, I just want to look at records, for instance. I'm going to do list sets. List sets, I mean, I'm going to go to uh, uh, I think that I know is uh, question 76, core 76. I know 76 is from, I know these are, these these are from the School of Education, right? These are ETDs from the School of Education. I know this because uh, I know the, 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 the ID, the spec ID. This is fine, you don't have to memorize these things, but you can look it up and verify this. But observe, once I do that, by default, I'm viewing this, information using Dublin Core. See this, the prefix, metadata prefix, OAI, DC, hmm? you just copy it so you see it here. OAI, DC, you see that? Yeah. This, the yeah. prefix, OAI, DC, Dublin Core. But you can, you can change this to something else, right? How do you know what to change it to? In case you're curious or you're interested anyway. There are a number of metadata schemes that you can use to extract data from here. Cross-walking effectively, right? ETD. MS. ETDMS is there. So all I have to do here is change this to ETD. ETDMS. And then um, use this same URL. You notice that by default here, if I go back to where we were, we are viewing this, these records. You see these records? They encoded using Dublin Core. You see this DC, right? But if I, if I, if I specify to say I want to open up the metadata, one of the metadata links, here, you notice that um, the things have changed. Right? Those tags, yeah. like XML yeah. tags, have changed. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, in theory, you can easily crosswalk. This is not the problem. But in your case, the crosswalking from your application to to the display repository is going to be done by application, right? So you are specifying this within the application to say, before you send the information, obviously you query it from the database, you extract it. Once you get it from the database, you format the payload. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You format, okay, you format the payload. <laughs> it's just the one doing that. Okay, yeah. you format, <laughs> you format the payload in this manner. And this is this is easy. All you're doing is you're creating a JSON representation of what you're, you're going to. What? What's so funny? Is this trivial? It's trivial, right? No. It's not trivial, sir, because it's really like simple. No. Okay, so. For each field, right? Which is why I said we have to look at his his schema, his database schema. So for once you are extracting that information, for each field in the database, you'd have to create. You, you're creating, so, so think of this as being, okay, let me just show you something. Oh, shit. Do I have, a, I'm just going to go to Mongo. Use, uh, yes, and I have a question on this. Okay. The, the Zambian watchdog, isn't it, that's, that's a database, their database. They have access to it. Like, no, what, what, what did this one? It's not the Zambian. No. Facebook. How, would I, how, how does this 
He extracted how the data. He how did you have this in your laptop in short time? He created it just like he created the databases that you have on your machine. Oh. He created it and then imported data. Oh, you just did an importation. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So db dot etd, right? Observe, right? Okay, just limit this. So what you'd be doing is you you query you query uh what I listed one. Is this one it is one, okay. The fields here. So you, you query a record like this, right? Assuming it's structured like this. You query this record and then all you'd be doing is identify which of these fields are relevant to what you want to send on the other side. Right? This is what you're doing. This is what you're doing. So what is relevant here? Title, creator, type, date, subject. But this is a database. When you query from the database, you know, if, if title is important, then you'll obviously have the hard coded. If you want, actually, you can hard code this template somewhere in your code and you say, Let's say you have a return statement saying you're going to return something like this, but what you're going to do is value, instead of writing the name here, this would be, this would be like the variable. So if it's, if you when you're extracting data from the database and you, you, you're using, a, let's say, a rec, a ETD record as, as, as like a, an instance of the schema that you're playing around with, right? It will be etd record dot dot uh, right dot create and then for description instead of this specific value you just have etd record dot description it's easy do you understand this Right? Okay. Um, right, so once you have this, change this to your name, to something different. Then you change the name. We want to go back to the postman thing. We haven't finished the workflow. But do you understand what you need to do? Query, we'll look at the query in the database and see what's, what's the problem now. This is sad, right? You can't query from the database. <laughs> But we're getting into third year. <laughs> ah, sir, we are the only ones in our class who can. Can do it. Querying from the database. <laughs> Actually, not even, you'd just be, the setup. You'd be surprised. I'm sure ah, there are no. much more people that are, can do this. The only me. person maybe who has gotten an idea by now is Alihan. I think he's doing some attachments okay. on the same database. Right, so copy this thing, just the payload here. Because this is going to Postman. The, this entire thing here, this is the body you're going to send there. <laughs> Copy that? The data then, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 then this it's so is sad. But this is the thing here, right? When you're doing this, you'd have to constantly just try and check to see if the session hasn't expired yet. Oh. Let me figure it out on how, just send another request to the status endpoint. So if it expires, what do you log so your, your logic, your logic has to take into account the fact that when it, when when you're content with the fact that the credentials that you have are correct, there's nothing wrong with that. You'd have to constantly check if the authenticated true. is true. If status dot authenticated is equal to true, then process. Otherwise, hit the login endpoint. Once you hit the login endpoint, you're logging in. But once you hit the login endpoint, obviously you have to check again if you're authenticated. And then if it's true, you proceed, right? How do you proceed? You create the collection and whatnot. So, so what yeah, specify, <coughs> paste that data there. And then this time around though, um, Yeah, I think we should be fine. Mm -hmm. 
So we specify the payload. Mm -hmm. We just have to change the post the the yeah, yeah. request yeah, type yeah, method from uh, get to post because you are posting something. Right? Yeah. And then you send this. Once you send this, uh, it's going to return um, something wrong yeah, again. Where? Down. Okay, and supported media type it's here. This is because this has to be encoded in the setting with JSON, right? Just JSON. Oh. Then send that. I'm not right. Did this was wrong. <clears throat> Let's reload in and see what's going to happen here. Login. Check the status. Okay. Then we are going to. Okay. I think it's because. Um, Mm, I think it's because we don't have the credentials we need for you to be able to do this. I think so. What are you? Are you an admin here or something? Do you remember? No, I'm, I'm just. Uh, not submit. Okay, that's probably the reason why. So you need. Um, need to be given the appropriate credentials which we will do just now x control Okay, let's check the status and then. Okay, let's just try and post now. Okay, so it's working now. So it's just, you just needed to add you as a. But the thing is, the way this is going to work is um, ideally when you're posting to this space, the person who's going to configure the, configure the credentials to access the remote this space instance will ensure that they have access to do this. Right? So, now that you've done this, the next step is you, because this is also XML, right? You pass this XML, and then all you do is extract the UUID. Do you understand this? Yeah, this one. Yes. Copy that. So you, you just, in your code, you just say, get the response. And in fact, I've come across uh, uh, XML to JSON. Pretty nifty package. XML to JSON. It converts your XML to JSON. In the event that you you've uh, become accustomed to working with JSON encoded data seeing as MongoDB is pretty much JSON then what you can do is you can convert the XML response here into JSON representation using what that is? XML to JSON so let me just show you just now I will say I 
this will work though. I don't know if this will work. You know, I can try it out later, I suppose. There's something wrong with the way I... Sorry? Yes. Well, I, I wanted to mimic what's, uh, what's coming back from the response and then convert it to... Yes. Let's proceed. But you can convert it. Once you get back to the response, you just say you use the XML to JSON, and then I think there's a there's a method in there called uh, to JSON. Um, so it converts uh, XML representation into JSON. <laughs> no, it does. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. I'll just show you just now. Maybe. Yeah, seeing uh, is seeing is believing. Right? <laughs> um, what sort of example can we give? So I said to me that I can say, ah, yes, we will be doing as well as So anyway, let's let's proceed with the next step. We'll look at that. Remind me just now. We'll look at it. So, yes, um, I've so done the code, you get the uh, UUID code, yeah. which is here. You copy it. Um, because this thing you need to link the file yeah, after you post. to the metadata. Then so open a new tab. This time around, the, it's still going to be a post request. But uh, it takes in a, a couple of different, uh, the payload is somewhat different here. Um, the most important thing is the bitstream, the file, right? So you go in the body, you say binary, and then you select the file. Just say select file, and you can specify the file somewhere. Just select that same one, it's fine. Just open. But the end point is still exactly. I know. <laughs> I know. Just trying to remind. Thank you. Can I just do this? Again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but you have to confirm the endpoint from that, uh, from the menu and also the the index interface. I think it's here or something. So under collections. <laughs> And surrender items rather. It tells you that for you to add the bit string, you you issue there, you hit the item slash, the unique ID slash bit streams endpoint. So go back to postman, you realize that it's items. So it's supposed to be instead of collections there, it's supposed to be items. So delete everything here. Items slash paste the id because you want to link that bitstream to yes. that id that you've just created slash bitstream bit oh. is it bitstream or bitstreams streams streams is an s at the end also before you hit the send you feed it uh, important parameters, right? A la the um, so the the name of the file. Okay. So you, you specify the parameters. So this would be like as part of the query response. Right? So key just say uh, 
uh, file name is it name or file name is it name name I think name right the value just give it your name I guess dot PDF or something Yeah, just give it your name the, the PDF so that we see okay then let's see if we can, we can actually confirm this previous track of some things here okay. if everything is fine this should be able to Create this ID. This is fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just so when you go to the Zajlis instance, you should be able to to browse, go down and browse the. So, I guess maybe the first time we were we kept on sending, yeah, it should be. So, if you click on that, you should even have the the one that has your file name is the correct one. Right? Um, this is this is what you have to do. But. But the toughest thing is uh, extracting, not the toughest actually, it's just mapping, mapping this workflow to actual implementation. Yeah. But it's easy it's because all you have to do is you go, you come here, this, sorry, yeah, this is there, not car, this is there. So it's just copy pasting these things in this refactory. This is also here. The stuff you need to do is here. How hard can this be? The, the thing is... <laughs> what? What's the problem? Oh, this, I, I, I saw something like this in your code. Stringify, what does it do? Just on the stringify. Just on the stringify, it creates a string representation of uh, string representation of JSON response. Sometimes uh, sometimes uh, you might want to sometimes you 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 might end up returning an object. Right. An object like um let's say x is equal to name <clears throat> jackson for instance right now when when you're sending a response for instance you you sorry when you're sending a response you typically need to send it in you typically need to send it back to the server as json you see that res.json it expects you to feed it a json formatted response right you cannot send x the way it is you need to stringify it i know it does really just make sure that like the the key is what also a string true. everything is a string but again i mean if you look up zero you'll be able to figure out these things you don't have to ask right but anyway um <laughs> or if you go on google and just say what does just on stringify do it's a ton of documentation outlining what that is for is this fine yes, yes. This, Wait. Is, this is fine somehow so it's query. <coughs> oh, oh query Good. but querying is not uh, how hard is querying right let's check those records. Yes. 
<laughs> but querying, like sir, on the command, we we, we know. Okay, yeah, let's let's but open the command. Bring. Let's let's uh, we use this. Uh, what is this part? This part is done. It's got them. We can even. We can, can use. use. I think he. Let's open up here.